Welcome to worship at Trinity United Methodist Church in Hutchinson, Kansas. My name is Kim Beery, and I am the associate pastor here serving with our senior pastor, Michael Thompson DeGrief, where we are here together to love God and love all people. So welcome to worship. Please take a moment to fill out the attendance register, the red uh, pad in your pew, and pass that on down to your neighbor, please. Let's look at some wonderful opportunities today. Well, it is Commitment Sunday. What a wonderful day to worship and to give of ourselves. You have been, we're going to encourage you to bring up your filled in opportunities brochure, right, Michael? Yes, and the ushers have extra copies. Mm -hmm. If you forgot, either your commitment court card or your opportunities brochure, the ushers have them extra ones. So just raise your hands and they can give it to you. We'd like you to fill it out today and have 100% participation. I realize some of you have already turned it in, so thank you. But if you forgot it and you want one, just signal to an usher. And pledge cards. There's a pledge card yeah. and there's the opportunities brochure. Anybody need one? I saw a few hands go up. Nell needs one. Anybody else? Go ahead, signal, there you go. Thank you so much for participating in this. Appreciate that. All right, and then we, uh, during our offering time, our commitment time, you can bring them up front. There's a basket on this side for this part of the congregation, a basket on that side. So we can give of our time, talents, and treasures today in meaningful ways. The youth garage sale is this Saturday. And we will receive donations Friday evening between 5 and 7. And all the proceeds will benefit the 2022 youth. So you bring all your, your, your goods here if you'd like to donate on Friday evening. Trinity Youth will be helping with their safety ministry, which is uh, Sunday, November 7th at 515. So you can call the church office if you need help with light household chores. Then please mark your calendar for a special Sunday, All Saints Sunday, coming up um, on November 7th, when we will recognize the saints who have gone before us this last year. And next week, if you want to be with everyone here, make sure you change your clocks. And so you can set your clock a, an hour back and come join us for worship at the right time. So as we worship together, let's think of all the many ways that we are bound together with God's love.
Please stand if you are able to for our call, call to worship. Lord of the harvest, we receive life by rooting ourselves in the rich soil of your marvelous love. We give thanks with grateful hearts. Lord, you are the vine, and we are the branches producing fruit for your kingdom. May our word and deeds bring forth fruits of reconciliation, healing, and peace. the people's prayer loving and living God we are called together by the power of the Holy Spirit as the beloved community we welcome all people as children of God we are grateful for the gift of Trinity United Methodist Church we will nurture and serve the church family each of us is an important member of the body of Christ. We belong together. Each of us has been given spiritual gifts for ministry. We will use our gifts to build each other up and in love. We present ourselves as a living sacrifice, which we pray is acceptable and pleasing to you, O Lord. We renew our commitment to worship you, grow in you, serve you, and, and give back to you. We seek to build a community of faith where everyone feels accepted and valued. We believe that every person is worthy of dignity, respect, and love. Amen. When we gather to pray, we are communicating with God. And I don't know if you've ever had a relationship where you don't communicate very often, and then when you finally connect, you just, act, just talk about everything. Well, hopefully, the gaps between our communication with God are short, because we need not only to tell God our needs, but to also connect with God who is faithful and will direct us. So let us think about the many ways that we can share our prayer needs. There are cards that are in the pew that you can fill out and put in the offering plate when it comes around. Pastor Michael and I are always available before and after the service 
if you have a prayer need or would like to have a, a time of prayer. Also, we share our prayer needs on the bulletin. So you may note um, those who have asked for prayer with health concerns, and we do lift up the LaVon Thiessen and the family and friends of Alan Thiessen, who was laid to rest on Friday. So as we think about the many ways that God is with us, wanting to hear from us, wanting to connect, let us start with giving thanks to our living God in silence. Gracious God, fall is among us. The seasons are changing once again, from the green brilliance of trees full of life to the tumble of red, brown, yellow leaves signifying that it's time to prepare for the next season and the next phase. Holy God, you give meaning to every moment and ask that we do the same. May we be faithful in your sight in how we prepare each day to encounter a life committed to the gospel, a life that sacrifices, a life that seeks growth, a life that wants to be like Jesus Christ in word and deed. Hear what we bring to you, God, and with our commitment, help us shape uh, every day into your image. Faithful God, you are with us through the trials and tribulations of life, and we pray for an extra dose of strength for those who need it. We pray all these things in the name of the Lord of love, care, and unity, who taught us to pray as one people, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. morning. Okay, you guys can stay right up here with me. Don't you want to come and be by me? Okay, come on up. All the other kids who are here, you guys can come up too. Look, everybody won't come near me because they're frightened. Oh, look, there's Batman. Come on up. Hi, guys. 
Your bells sounded so good. Thank you for blessing us with that. Okay, so you guys look great. Now, some of you are dressed up already for our Halloween parade later, and I know some of you will probably dress up. But it's Halloween, so we need to talk costumes. What's everybody being this year? Lily, what are you being? A scarecrow. We've got Batman. We've got an old lady. Love it. What'd you guys say? Okay, well, we'll see it later, I guess. Okay, so do you like my costume? Yes, okay. Do you know what I'm supposed to be? Yeah, a fairy princess shark. Yeah, okay, well, I couldn't decide what I wanted to be. There were really so many things. And so I just kind of put it all together. So I am a cheery soccer ballerina shark. Um, from Hawaii <laughs> with pig slippers. So don't tell my daughter, Lauren, I'm wearing her beloved pig slippers. Okay, so it got me thinking about costumes. Halloween is so fun, and I, I don't really like the scary parts of Halloween, but I do love the costumes. In fact, I kind of, I always used to have trouble, just like today, I always had trouble deciding what to dress up as. I mean, I, I was thinking about what I've been. I've been a clown. I was Wonder Woman one year. I was a crayon, an astronaut. I think I was a golf caddy one year. I mean, I've just, I've been a lot of things. But you know what Jesus tells us in the Bible is that God loves each of us just like we are. We don't have to try to be someone else. God gives us all kinds of gifts, and he gives each person special gifts to share with the world, and he wants us to use those gifts that we've been given. He doesn't want us to try to be different people than who we really are. And just as we want to be loved and accepted by everyone, we also have to love and accept other people as they are. But on Halloween... It is the one time that it is okay to dress up as someone else and have fun. And so I hope you guys have a very safe and fun Halloween tonight. Would you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you for giving us times of fun and joy in our lives. And we're so grateful for the gifts that you've given each of us. And thank you for loving all of us just the way we are. Amen. Thank you, guys. We'll see you at 945.
The scripture for today is from Galatians 3, 12 to 17. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another if anyone has complaint against another. Forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule you in your thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and abolish one another in all wisdom and with gratitude in your hearts. Sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, or do anything in the name of the Lord Jesus, give thanks to the God, the Father, through him, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Uh, recently, Barna Research Group did a survey here in Kansas, and this is what they found out. 71% of Kansans reported being stressed. Can you imagine that? 62% said they felt anxious, 53% felt burned out, and 47% said they felt lonely. Does this match up with your experience? Two of the main sources of the problem have been the polarization and the divisions going on in our country and the isolation that's been caused by the COVID pandemic. This breakdown in community is causing a mental health crisis. We need each other. We need each other for encouragement, for relationships, for meaningful relationships and love. It's just good for the soul to be around other people. It's healing, it's comforting. We belong together, amen? Yeah, that's the way God made us. It's the way God made us, and it's why God gave us the gift of this church family. So may we take great care of the gift of our church family. Let's make an extra effort to be present and to be here when it's safe and appropriate so that we can continue to build community together. And I want to say a word about those who are watching from home. Certainly, we understand that some of our folks are homebound or sick or vulnerable, and we want you to know we miss you. And we love you, and we understand why you can't be here. Uh, But I want to continue to encourage everyone to come back home. That's going to be our theme for Advent and Christmas, to come back home for Christmas. Uh, It's important for us to be together as a community of faith and to know that this is how God created us, to love one another. These are very trying times. Folks are suffering in many ways, often in ways that we cannot see from the outside. So I want to encourage all of us to be gracious and kind to one another, and let us continue to look for ways to encourage each other and to build each other up in love. Let us pray. Holy God, we gather here today eagerly awaiting your word for each one of us. May our minds be open to learn, our hearts be willing to change, and our hands be ready to serve. We ask for this blessing in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Work me, coach. I want to win. Work me, coach. I want to win. I will never forget that cheer as long as I live. It was the summer of 1977. You can see me there on the block, that skinny little kid. Right there in the middle. I was eight years old, and I was a member of a swim team called the Brentwood Gators. I was a gator. I still am a gator. Our coach, Bart Baker, taught us this cheer, and he would make us say it to him at every practice. Work me, coach. I want to win. It's kind of reverse psychology, right? In fact, uh, he put it on our t-shirts for our team. It said, work me, coach. I want to win. He was a great coach. Coach Bart inspired us. He pushed us. He demanded more from us. And he knew we could do more. He knew we could do better because Coach Bart believed in us. He wanted us to stretch and to grow and to reach our potential as athletes. Now, swim practice was early in the morning. In fact, it was like 7 o'clock in the morning is what I remember, riding my bike to the swimming pool to have practice before the pool opened. But later in the day, I would go back to the pool just to play with my friends and hang out. And Coach Bart would get a hold of me And he'd make me do extra push-ups and extra sprints in the pool. And he would work me and work me and work me. And I hated it. 
I just went up there to have fun, and he was making me work. But secretly, I loved it. I actually did love it. Because even though he was relentless and demanding, I knew he did it out of love for me. I could feel that. Coach Bart had high expectations. He set these big goals, and then he demanded we worked hard to achieve them. And we responded to the call. We rose to the occasion. And you know what's really cool? Is that it worked. The hard work paid off. Our team won a lot of swim meets. And I personally won a lot of medals and trophies that year. Coach Bart led our swim team to accomplish far more than any of us thought we were capable of. Now here at Trinity, we're in our second year of ministry together. Praise God. And God willing, we'll have many more years together because um, we belong together. That's the theme. We're still getting to know each other. I realize because of the pandemic, a worldwide pandemic, there's been some challenges in connecting. Uh, we're still, I think, in the beginning phases of a pastor-congregation relationship uh, because it's been more difficult to connect. And by the way, let me just say a couple things, actually. It's not, a, not on here, but it just popped in my head. First of all, thank you for all the cards for pastor appreciation. Kim and I have been uh, overwhelmed by touching notes and uh, just little gifts and gift cards and things. Thank you so much. It means a lot, and um, especially the prayers and the kind words. The other thing I wanted to say is it has been such a weird year and a half that if you're like, boy, I, I just don't really know Pastor Michael. I, it's just, I haven't connected with him yet. Call me. Let's go get coffee. Let's get lunch. Let me come over and see you at your house. I, things are getting better, and I'm more available, and it's easier to connect and if you're feeling kind of alienated, so am I. Um, it's been a, just a strange, strange year and a half. But here's what I want you to hear. I love being your pastor. I love this community. I love you. And I'm actually proud of what we've accomplished together already, <laughs> despite all the challenges, by the grace of God and by the power of the Holy Spirit. But we're just getting warmed up just barely getting started. And God knows that we are capable of much more as a congregation. We have so many gifts to do ministry with. We have, first of all, we have people who are dedicated and talented. We have a beautiful facility and equipment to work with. And then we have resources that we can use to grow and expand and improve and renew Trinity and, and flourish. We have these God-given gifts. And throughout the month of October, we've been talking about uh, how to deepen our commitment to the church, that we can do more and do better, right? And when we worship God, grow in God, serve God, and give back to God, these are the ways we build community and we strengthen our church family. And so I'm encouraging all of you to step up your game, to stretch and grow and to use your gifts and your resources so that we can fulfill our mission to love God and love people. You know, I decided not to put it on the screen because they're on these beautiful banners. Love God, love people, right? It's the easiest mission statement in the world. We know why we exist. Love God and love people. And we need everybody's help to make that hap happen. Now, if it feels like I'm being a little bit of, a little pushy, I'm, uh, like a coach asking you to do more and to do better, I think that's the role of a pastor. As a spiritual leader, to, to love you where you're at, but to love you enough not to leave you there. Love you enough to encourage you to grow and expand and improve and do better. To help all of us reach our God-given potential. Because it's very clear in the Bible that God has plans for us to give us a future with hope. That God is doing a new thing and it's springing forth. Can you not perceive it? And God is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. Amen? Yeah. In a moment, at the end of the sermon, you're all going to be invited to come forward. And we have these baskets here. Instead of passing the offering plate, we're going to come forward as an act of worship and place our commitment cards and our brochures and today's offering in these baskets. It's a way of coming forth and showing our love and our devotion and our dedication to God and presenting these as an act of worship. These are much more than just a piece of paper. This is a powerful symbol. You know how it is when you write down something and you make a commitment to something, you're more likely to do it, right? 
This is a symbol of your love and your gratitude towards God. As is stated in our passage today from Colossians, above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds together everything in perfect harmony. And then he reminds us, whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Love and gratitude. That's at the heart of why we serve, why we give. It's our motivation, our inspiration. Love and gratitude is what pleases God. It's what glorifies God. Let me put it to you this way. Imagine I bought some flowers to give to my wife, and I came home. I said, here, honey, here's some flowers. And she said, that is so sweet. Wow, I'm so surprised. I'm so touched. And if I said, well, you know, I'm your husband. It's my duty. I have to buy them. How do you think she would feel? <laughs> or what if I said, I wasn't really planning to buy you any flowers, but they were on sale at Dylan's. They were like $2.99. It wasn't a big deal. So here you go. How do you think that would make her feel? I was like, what if I said, you know, really, I wasn't even thinking about you. You're kind of an afterthought. I just, I just figured you kind of needed them. Does she even want them now? Does she? Do you think my wife would want them? No. Why? Why wouldn't she want them? Because she could tell my heart wasn't in the right place, that I didn't really care. My wife doesn't want me to just go through the motions. My wife wants my heart. And the same is true with God. God does not want you to just go through the motions. When you worship, grow, serve, and give, God wants your heart. For where your heart is, there your treasure will be also. Amen. Our offering time is an opportunity to give from our hearts with our whole being. As the widow came forward and gave just a small amount of money and the disciples watched and were judgmental, Jesus says she gave from her heart. And today we give from our heart not only our offerings financially, but of our gifts and our talents, because God needs each one of us. There are many ways to give uh, financially. You can give on the website or through our Venmo account. Just know that when you give, we are more blessed to give than to receive back, and God uses all our gifts in life-changing ways. So as we come forward and give today, if you're unable to get up and, and come forward, uh, maybe we could, uh, uh, you raise your hand and, and maybe Jerry can catch you um, if you're unable to get up today. But bring all your offerings this morning. Bring your whole self and you will be blessed as you give.
With joyful heart we come, with willing hands we come. We profound gratitude we come to present our tithes and offerings. Lord, accept and bless these gifts to the work of far many deeply committed disciples of Jesus Christ, so that we may fulfill the mission of deliverance. Love God and love people. Amen. Thank you for being here this morning and thank you for coming forth and bringing up uh, your tithes and offerings and your commitments. Let's bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Wherever you go and whoever you meet, remember to be kind and gentle, thoughtful and gracious, for you know not what burdens others may bear in their hearts or in their minds or in their bodies, for we are the body of Christ, so go in peace.